one of the films screening at this year's Children's International Film Festival in Melbourne and Sydney is a film called Island of Lost Girls. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the creators, directors of Island of Lost Girls, Anne-Marie Schmidt and Brian Schmidt. Welcome to Movie Metropolis. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having us. This is such a, an intriguing concept uh, of these uh, tough girls. <laughs> Tell me about uh, the, the uh, how it all came about. Uh, well, actually, they're, the girls in the movie are our children. And I was reading um, The Island of Blue Dolphins. It's a book. And so um, I just was kind of, you know, we had finished a, a previous film that was kind of an adventure film as well. And I thought this this story was something that it kind of inspired me and Brian to kind of make um, just a, a film with our daughters dealing with the ocean, you know, and the adventures in the ocean um, versus the land, like our first film. And, and, and we grew up swimming in a lot of sea caves and with sea lions. Mm -hmm. And we just thought it'd be cool to give the chance to try to share that experience with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the the three sisters involved, the three three girls involved, they seem pretty rambunctious, pretty pretty uh, you know on the go and so on. Um, did they improvise their their story or script, or was did you very tightly uh, control the story? Well, I, I'd say that, that we kind of had like a uh, a rough idea of what we we're going to do, and yeah, you know, we had different story beats we were going to hit, and we'd go and talk with the girls and explain what we're trying to get out of it. And so the, it was very collaborative where they would tell us what they felt like they could do, what they couldn't do. And they try to see like, they try to come up with ways that they could improve it and make it a little bit more exciting or interesting. Mm -hmm. Or just, you know, from the mouth of a child, you know, sometimes we would just tell them like what we want them to say and they would just say it like a child would say it. And actually it turned out a lot better. And we, we've learned that from, you know, previous mm -hmm. filming with children that, it actually just comes off much more natural. Okay. okay. I found that really interesting because at the start of the film, the setup, um, here are these three naughty girls who escape home and escape uh, <laughs> who's looking after them. I thought, my goodness, they need uh, they need a bit of discipline, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they were definitely mischievous. I'm not sure. If they, they were not, not terrible girls. They were such good girls in the movie, but... Um, yeah, they were definitely being a little naughty, but um, I think that's part of the charm, you know, just like a kid wanting to get out and be a little bit wild and free, you know. Okay, so let's talk about the filming because uh, they, they, it seems that they're put in some very dangerous situations when they eventually get to this uh, lighthouse island and uh, uh, and mm -hmm. they meet the elephant seal and the um, uh, other seals. Uh, tell me about filming that because it, uh, the editing must have uh, been very, very powerful to make sure it, it looked as if they were in danger, but they weren't. Yeah, I'm really yeah. happy you feel like they were, <laughs> that, that it does appear that they were in danger. I'm glad you think that. <laughs> I, I, yeah, a, a part of it, 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 it's like a combination uh, of, uh, like, you know, we watch a lot of old uh, silent films. Like, we, we're big fans of, like, Harold Lloyd, who is, like, a big comedy action star in the 1920s. And just seeing how he would do his setups of, like, where it looked a lot more dangerous than what it was. And so we'd go and try it in the same way in the different environments, try to find things that, you know, appear more dangerous than they are and try to work around it. And a lot of times too, like, you know, cause at the same time we've got to be filming this. So it's got to be safe enough that we can operate a camera. And I don't know, for fun, we probably actually go into more dangerous stuff, but you know, you don't have an extra hand free to hold a camera. And so we just kind of had to kind of tame it down for the movie. You know, as we're I mean, to work all, this all this stuff we we do with the kids all the time, you know, swimming in the sea caves. And it was just a matter of like visualizing what it should look like and capturing a spot where it looks tremendous and and the kids go there. But really off screen, there might be like a nice, quiet little beach or something, you know, I mean, it's not like they're in peril, yeah. you know. Yeah. And we, and we do do a little bit of trick photography with the elephant seals to make it seem like the girls are closer than they are. Uh, uh, so we had a few tricks up our, our sleeve, you know, as we shot those scenes. But yeah. uh, I don't know, the, the girls are still on the beaches with the seals. So it was, it was a lot of fun. 
Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, and and the magic of filmmaking, because because uh, yes, you you've uh, done a great job in making it look as if uh, it was dangerous, but of course it it, it uh, pretty much wasn't. Did you use a single camera in filming, and did it take a long time to feel uh, film? Because I can imagine uh, it it wouldn't have been easy doing uh, getting some of those shots. Well, uh, I I'd say like it's like a. Uh... If we could, we try to use two cameras, and and a lot of times too. If you don't see the girls on screen, they're off screen filming with us and stuff, and doing a lot of the footage. Yeah, sometimes we'd have to be swimming with the kids in the water. You know, maybe two of us, and then whatever child wasn't filming at the time might be making sure the camera's steady. You know, but I mean, it generally was two cameras. Uh, and we had like a boom mm -hmm. mic, but really most of it was done by Brian and I. Um, and at one point I was pregnant, so I couldn't um, quite fight the waves when I'm like seven months to nine months pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so we hired our friend who's a, a photographer to come out and help us. And that was the other, per just the third person that was there helping. So um, she did a lot of work during that time for us. But, but I'd say too, it, it was one of those things that like, uh... You know, we didn't shoot for like 12 hours or 10 hours a day. It was more like, you know, we'd go and like when the girls got off of school, we'd go and do like a few hours here and a few mm -hmm. hours there and just slowly worked on it piece by piece as we yeah. tried to get the stuff together. And sometimes we'd go down the beach with the seals and some days they're really active and then you get a lot of stuff. And then there's a lot of times they're just laying out on the rocks and being lazy we just don't get anything those days. I mean, I feel like it just kind of turns out to be, you know, nature walks and hiking through, you know, beautiful spots with the kids and capturing what we can while we can. You know, we weren't like, it wasn't like the way a movie set was. You know, if the kids got tired, we would just stop. You know, we'd have snacks on hand and they're our children. So we just took care of them like a parent would, you know. Uh, we, we had a good, there's lots of good memories, I'll say that. <laughs> okay. Okay. You didn't have any stunt children to stand in for them just in case. <laughs> no. no, but our kids are kind of adventurous. So we would just say, you know, what do you feel about climbing this section of rock or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? And if they were just scared, we'd say, okay, we'll find something else, you know? But I, I mean, at the same time, too, we, we'd have some of the stuff was really challenging because we have the scene where our youngest daughter is surfing with a sea lion. And, you know, it was just very tough to get a day where the waves were big enough going in the right direction and the sea lions were going in it, you know, in the waves and trying to chase after her at the same time. So it was a lot of trial and error before we, we finally got a day where, you know, everything, you know, the stars aligned and we got the sea lion to go after her and she's on her little board and, you know, it ended up looking pretty good. <laughs> Very good. Very well done. I must admit, I was also worried that uh, sharks or uh, other sorts of creatures might be there as well to uh, interfere. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, we, you know, we film mostly in La Jolla Cove. And so there's not that many sharks there that are like. Yeah, most, most, of the, a... most of the sharks there are pretty, pretty friendly sharks. But there was, uh, <laughs> there was, well, I didn't see it, but apparently there was an orca that had came into the cove one of the days when we were filming, but I, I, I didn't see it. And it was, oh, really? Yeah, it was in the newspapers. Oh. And that's the only reason I heard about it was that other people had spotted it. But we're not really, you know, out in the open, open water. Right. I mean, that was all an illusion, you know, um, in, in the well, don't, movie. Don't destroy the I magic. destroyed everything right there. Um, <laughs> but I, it was, uh, a lot of that area, people swim, like just uh, for exercise. Right. So it, it's a place where lots of people usually are. So we had to kind of wait for no, you know, when no one was there to get those wide shots of the mountain, the open water. Okay. And of course, we're talking about California, of course, when you say La Jolla and uh, et cetera. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so we shot part of the movie there in San Diego in California. And then we shot part of it down in Mexico on this remote island off the mm -hmm. coast of Baja. Mm -hmm. And then we shot like another section a little bit further no. up the coast of California. Yeah. Okay. Did you have any problems with uh, people on the beaches or whatever trying to interfere with your filmmaking? 
No, people are no. generally pretty nice. Actually, uh, like people tried to help and get out of the way, and it was pretty. But I mean, for the most friendly. for the most part, though, we are shooting in areas that generally there aren't too many other people. Like it was mm -hmm. just like on the wide shots she's talking about that we needed it clear. But a lot of times when we we're, just waited until there was no one there. You yeah, know? when we're in the caves and stuff, there really aren't too many people. Yeah. Okay. I must say also, as I was watching the film, I thought this story was possibly because of the way the, the, the three sisters were arguing with one another at times and so on, that this was going to turn into a female Lord of the Flies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. The, the, girls, the girls like to get into it with one another from time to time. So that's not probably too far off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, well, congratulations on that because I, I can imagine then when you got all the footage and and edited it all together that that in itself creating the film the final version of the film must have been quite a process for you. Oh. Oh yeah. yeah. I and mean, we also he also had to work a full time job, and we also have six children now, so we were you know having lots of it was just hectic. But he would come home after work and edit after you know he'd eat dinner and then edit for like five years you know four years or whatever it was well, i don't think it was that it long. just felt like forever <laughs> it didn't feel like but a the long kids, time the kids all would love to watch you know they wanted to see their scenes right after they'd shoot he'd start piecing it together and they'd be like oh i think you should cut this part out or make this part longer and they were part of it all so it helps I, a lot I, i'd say though that the, the you know, because obviously, like, there's a lot of stuff we shot that we couldn't use. And, and one of our daughters was really disappointed that we cut this one scene where she gets like, she gets like a crab on her hand and she tries to throw it off and it hits a bunch of other crabs and they all come raining down on her and she's like just covered in crabs. We had to cut it because it just didn't work for like the pacing or whatever. And so she was really, really disappointed that we cut that scene from the movie. Oh well, I suppose I suppose the DVD release can have all of those deleted scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be a good idea. We could get some some of that together. <laughs> <laughs> and six children. My goodness, I can just see a sequel now. Island of many lost girls. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, we only have three three girls, and then we have three boys in a row. Ah. So we have to do a boy movie now. Yes. You know? the, yeah. The... <laughs> The battle on the island. Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I know we have a <laughs> we have a really fun uh, movie in the works. Possibly, but the, the, but... the boys are really into BMX bikes, and uh, so we're trying to see if we can possibly come up with a movie I around that. Incorporate that, that or like treehouse. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know if you remember it, but uh, our oldest son, he's a big fan of uh, what is it, BMX bandits. Oh yes. Yeah, and he and he's uh. Like he doesn't know Nicole Kidman had a you know a stunt uh, rider for her, but he thinks that she must be like the world's greatest BMX rider. <laughs> I like that. Ah, the magic of the movie strikes again. There you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, uh, the film is releasing now uh, this month in Australia for the Children's International Film Festival. Where else? Yeah, which is fantastic. Where mm -hmm. else has the film been screened? Well, we, we've done, uh, so we've done Canada. like, uh, yeah, it's played in Canada at this Fantasia Film Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done a few children's film festivals in Ireland and Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it was in Goa at the uh, International Film Festival of India. Mm -hmm. And it was here in San Diego. Yeah. Um, so I'm just a few places, Canada. a few places all around and stuff. Yeah. It's so interesting. It, relatively speaking, there are there are fewer children's or family films being made. We have mostly adult films, etc. So it's great yeah. to see this sort of film being available and in this uh, children's film festival too. Oh, yeah. thank you. We definitely enjoy it too because because I also even feel too with children's entertainment, like there's definitely a lot of animated films being made these days. Yeah. But I feel like the, the live action section is getting, you know, smaller and smaller. Well, and I feel like sometimes I feel like the kids just sound like they're reading a script, you know, and it just doesn't sound like natural. So, I mean, just that just kind of takes me out of a lot of children's films. But I mean, it, it'd be nice to get like a, a lot more adventure films where kids are being a little bit more... Mm -hmm. I don't know, like back when we were kids and we watched Goonies and it was a little more wild and free and like not so 
not so like um, helicopter we're, mom parent. We're, we're, <laughs> we're big fans of like Swiss Family Robinson. And oh, yeah. Like that. <laughs> uh, uh, that's fantastic. And and I suppose there is another issue nowadays, that we're, especially with making children's films about health and safety, of course, on set and so on, but also the depiction of young people and issues that they face. I suppose you have to tread carefully sometimes not to uh, be politically incorrect, that sort of thing, I suppose. Well, I, I don't say uh, we don't really worry about it too much because it's kind of like, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're only using our own children for the most part. And so, like, you know, we just kind of think of it. I don't know, like when we're making the movies, it's kind of like we always think of it as just like kind of like a, a peek into our lives and what our kids like to do and enjoy. Mm. So like, you know, there's no too many larger issues that we're really well, concerned about. I also feel like children shouldn't have to worry about, you know, political stuff and um, agendas pushed on them. And I just want to make it easy for a kid to watch a movie and not feel like they're forced to think something, you know, separate from yeah. just being a child, you know? Yep. Um, so I'm, I actually miss those kind of movies. I think now it sounds, it seems like adults are always trying to put their agenda on the kids mm. and, you know. Very true. Yeah, be, yeah, you know? yeah. Yep, no, I, I understand perfectly. So are, are yeah. you already working on your next film? Well, I think I think we would we, we would love to. It's just uh, you know the funding, and we funded the last two projects ourselves, and we really uh, would love to get some so, backing for the next one. Yeah, if, if we could, like we're definitely like writing and planning stuff out, mm -hmm. uh, and you know if just if this one does well enough, then you know hopefully we'll be able to have enough money to you know yeah. continue to make future projects i know we're so thankful it's in lots of different festivals because that just really helps us and if people like our movies like you know we we would just love to make more we have he has like three or four other scripts already have written and you know it just it, it would work it would be great you know but if not we can just work a normal job and <laughs> you know, live life <laughs> Well, hopefully you can make more films because uh, yeah. I, I found this really interesting, The uh, Island of Lost Girls. And, oh, yeah, and I just wanted to ask you, um, in terms then of children's films, have you seen any recent children's films, probably not animation but live action, that has impressed you? You know, I, I have. It, it seems, though, that, like, a lot of times it's, like, uh, ones that I've seen at other film festivals and like, it, it's just like, um, cause in France they did, there was one of, uh, called Sebastian and Bell. And it was about like, you know, the, this boy during World War II yep. and like, you know, he has this dog that, are you familiar with the story? I know it well. In fact, there've been three sequels, I think, made to, from that original film. Yeah. And, and I enjoy the ones that take place during World War II. Cause I also know they recently remade it in modern times and that yep. was not quite as much fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So I really enjoyed that. And I don't know, every now and then, you know, I come across little ones and it, it's always so hard to try to get a way to to get it and bring it to show it to my kids. Cause it seems like, you know, they're little obscure ones here and there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Look, congratulations on Island of Lost Girls screening as part of the Children's International Film Festival this month. Uh, and we've been speaking to the creators of the Island of Lost Girls, Anne-Marie Schmidt and Brian Schmidt. Thank you so much for talking with me. Thank oh, you so much for having us. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Right, bye. Good night.